ఇంటర్మీడియట్ విద్యా రంగంలో అగ్రగామి మన ఎన్ఎస్ఆర్ ఇంపల్స్ ఎడ్యుకేషన్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూషన్ ఐఐటి జేఏఐనా తెలుగులేని విద్యా సంస్థ ఎన్ఎస్ఆర్ ఇంపల్స్ నా లెట్ ఎస్ టాక్ అబౌట్ ప్లాస్మోలసిస్ వాట్ వీ హ్యావ్ టు అండర్స్టాండ్ హియర్ ప్లాస్మోలసిస్ ఇస్ నథింగ్ బట్ అ రివర్సిబుల్ ప్రాసెస్ ప్లాస్మోలసిస్ ఈజ్ అ రివర్సిబుల్ ప్రాసెస్ why it is called reversible process because here we discuss about plasmolysis similarly let us talk about deplasmolysis let us talk about deplasmolysis that means here we can say that let me write about about to this so this is nothing but డీ ప్లాస్మోలసిస్ బోత్ ఆర్ నథింగ్ బట్ రివర్సిబుల్ ప్రాసెస్ సో వాట్ యూ కెన్ సీ హియర్ ప్లాస్మోలసిస్ ఇస్ సెట్ టు బీ రివర్సిబుల్ ప్రాసెస్ వై డూ యూ కాల్ ఇట్స్ రివర్సిబుల్ ప్రాసెస్ ప్లాస్మోలసిస్ కెన్ బికమ్ డీ ప్లాస్మోలసిస్ ఆఫ్టర్ సమ్ టైమ్ డీ ప్లాస్మోలసిస్ కెన్ బికమ్ అగైన్ plasmolysis so it's said to be a reversible process now let us see very clearly the conditions where deplasmolysis happens and where plasmolysis happens listen carefully here now when we talk about plasmolysis here here we talk about plasmolysis occurs in plasmolysis occurs in hypotonic solution hypotonic solution okay so we are talking about we are discussing about plasmolysis plasmolysis occurs in hypotonic solution so what is hypotonic solution we discussed for the last class now let me take the same situation of hypotonic solution let us say a plant cell is in hypotonic condition so if you take this is a cell this is a cell and if here you find cell wall and here you find cell membrane or let me write this set better we can write so much on other side here so what you can write these two things let us write this side because we have to write what happens here in this corner now let us write this side i'm writing cell wall you all know it very well it's an outermost non living rigid layer that means when solution comes and goes also no problem it is as it is very strong layer it will not it is not flexible to move on it is very strong a non living rigid layer that is nothing but cell wall in cytology we discussed right inside the cell wall what you find here itself is nothing but cell membrane inside you find what is called as a cell membrane so what happens here cell is let us take this is plant cell plant cell is kept in hypotonic means what outside the cell you find high solute concentration outside the cell you find high solute concentration it is obviously understood that inside the cell you find low solute concentration inside the cell you find what is that low solute concentration now when low solute concentration is there then you find more water inside the cell you find more water that means high water potential that means what you find high water potential now here if you take outside the cell less water is there and less water means low water potential okay so where to where movement occurs here movement always occurs from higher water potential to lower water potential what we are discussing we are discussing the plant cell inside the plant cell with the external solution external solution has high solute concentration it's said to be hypo and when high solute means automatically it is understood less water means lower water potential obviously you can understand inside the cell 
low solute concentration means more water higher water potential that means movement happens from where to where higher water potential to lower water potential that means water is coming out so when it is coming out here what occurs is called as exosmosis what is happening here movement of water movement of solution coming out from where to where inside the cell to outside the cell inside the cell means from cytoplasm to external solution solution is coming out that means it's called ex osmosis right now after some time after some time what happens here now if it continues further after some time the cell wall is as it is no doubt but you can see shrinking occurs only at the corners shrinking occurs only at the corners okay so here shrink of protoplast cell membrane is also called as what it's called protoplast what is a protoplast here what is protoplast cell membrane plus cytoplasm what is a protoplast we discussed previously also what is a protoplast in this case protoplast means cell membrane plus cytoplasm so when you take cell membrane plus cytoplasm means here you can see at the corners of the cell this is cell wall this is cell wall at the corners of the cell shrink of protoplast takes place shrink of protoplast protoplast started shrinking at the corners so shrink of protoplast is occurring at the corners at the corners can you see this yes shrink of protoplast is happening at the corners from the corners it is getting shrink why solution is keep going out solution is going out because of exosmosis as we keep the cell is in hypertonic solution now shrink of protoplast at the corners it's called this called i am writing here it's called incipient plasmolysis or it's called partial plasmolysis okay so what it is referred as what it is referred as when you can see protoplast is shrinking at the corners when protoplast is shrinking at the corners such kind of shrinking of protoplast at the corners it's called partial plasmolysis or itself is called uh, complete or incipient partial means what incipient incipient plasmolysis or itself is called partial plasmolysis now after some time what happens if it continues further after some time what happens cell wall is as it is so we can take cell wall is as it is now you can see the protoplast is shrink so you can take much a smaller one you can take completely like this so this is what is called as a complete shrink of a complete shrink of protoplast complete shrink of protoplast itself is called plasmolysis itself is called plasmolysis what's that when everything goes out when everything goes out and keep moving and solution is going out when everything goes out here there is a complete shrink of protoplast means protoplasm got complete shrink in all the corners it got completely shrink when it is complete shrink is there now it's a total plas called as plasmolysis and this is referred to as plasmolysed cell or itself is called as plas itself so this itself is called what this is called i'm writing here this itself is called as what plas itself all right this itself is called as what plas itself so plasmolysed cell itself is called plas itself 
what happens to plasid cell in this case now if you look at in this case we find the condition of the cell if you look at I am erasing this I hope you already noted down what is this the shrinking of protoplast occurs at the corners and this is called incipient plasmolysis or we call partial plasmolysis I am erasing this this is a definition or we can note down clearly now let us see what happens to a plasid cell so when you take the plasid cell here I am writing here for a plasid cell for a plasid cell what's happening here solution is going out what is happening here solution is going out complete solution is going out from inside the cell to outside the cell then when solution is going out here the pressure potential becomes zero the pressure potential becomes zero no application of pressure because solution is going out right so for a plasid cell we say pressure potential what is the pressure potential we say psi p psi p becomes zero very very important clearly note down very very important okay so here if you take thank you sir so here if you take pressure potential where pressure potential is zero because we are talking about a plastic cell plastic cell means what plasmolyzed cell for a plasmolyzed cell a solution is going out of the cell pressure potential becomes zero then for a plastic cell how do you calculate water potential water potential is equal to solute potential at standard atmospheric pressure at standard atmospheric pressure you can take that water potential of a plasid cell is equal to solute potential so whenever in the numerical question or whenever in the question if they are speaking about for a plasmolyzed cell or for a plasid cell you have to take the formula water potential is equal to solute potential at standard atmospheric pressure because application of pressure pressure potential becomes zero for a plasid cell very very important got it right now this is for a plasid cell this is plasid cell this is plasid cell now what we can do now take the plasid cell take the plasid cell now keep it in hypotonic now until here we completed what is called plasmolysis remember plasmolysis occurs in hypotonic and what occurs is called exosmosis it leads to plasid cell where pressure potential is zero so at standard atmospheric pressure for a plasid cell you have to calculate water potential as itself is solute potential until here we discussed about what is called plasmolysis now what we said the first point plasmolysis is reversible that means take the plasid cell and keep it in hypotonic solution keep it in hypotonic solution what we can do take the plasid cell and keep it in hypotonic solution then what happens when you keep the cell in hypotonic i am talking about what we are discussing about deplasmolysis take the plasid cell right this is plant cell outside the cell you find less solute concentration inside the cell you find high solute concentration when you keep the cell in less solute concentration less means it is referred as what hypotonic that means we are taking the plasid cell let us imagine we are taking the plasid cell so here you can see complete shrinking of the protoplast but inside you find more solute is there because water continuously gone out water totally lost inside you find more solute concentration that means we find high solute concentration when high solute is there automatically you find less water we find very very less water and what you find a low water potential and what you find low water potential where within the plasid cell this is complete shrinking of the photoplast we are taking the plasid cell and keeping it in hypotonic solution okay 
so what happens outside the soul here external solution external solution contain less solute less solute means automatically you find more water when you find more water you find higher water potential external solution has higher water potential when external solution has higher water potential movement happens from where to where higher water potential to lower water potential so water starts moving from outside the cell into inside the cell in all the corner what occurs here it's called endosmosis what occurs here it's called as endosmosis what occurs here it's called as an osmosis okay all right i hope you got it right external solution has less solute it's said to be hypotonic right inside you find more solute because we are taking the placid cell inside water is less and lower water potential right so here movement happens from outside the cell into inside the cell higher water potential to lower water potential the movement occurs then it is happening what is called endosmosis as a result of endosmosis as the solution is entering from all the direction to outside the cell to inside the cell now this leads to what is called a turgid cell it leads to formation of what is called a turgid cell now if you look at this turgid cell in this case so if you look at in this case the turgid cell now what you can see in this case here now this is earlier the cell condition is like this you find the condition like this it's completely a placid cell earlier now because of solution entering in all directions now it becomes a fully turgid cell now it becomes what turgid cell because the entry of water from all directions it gets swollen it gets swollen and because of swelling because of more entry of water the placid cell becomes now turgid cell turgid cell means what deplasmolyzed cell turgid cell means what a deplasmolyzed cell deplasmolysis has taken place now in this case when water enters here with the pressure when water enters with pressure water enters with pressure it's called pressure potential it's called pressure potential psi p right then cell will be totally filled cell will be totally filled after some time what happen after filling the water like this pressure potential touches after that again solution comes and touches so the pressure applied pressure against wall it's called it's called tergar pressure or we call wall pressure okay so here with what pressure water enters is called pressure potential after filling the total here let me write here let me take like this after entering the water total here water again starts moving in different directions again comes back and touches the protoplast as water coming in opposite direction touching the wall of the protoplast so whenever pressure exists again as to protoplast itself or again as the protoplast it's called tergar pressure or wall pressure with what pressure water enters across protoplast is pressure potential again as to the protoplast whenever pressure touches water touches the wall with a pressure that is called tergar pressure or wall pressure meaning the pressure against wall pressure against wall it's called tergar pressure or wall pressure so for a turgid cell i'm writing here for a turgid cell we write water pollution is equal to solute potential plus pressure potential how do you calculate water potential for a turgid cell for a turgid cell 
water potential is equal to solute potential plus pressure potential. So, I hope you got it. Now, let us discuss, let us quickly revise what is plasmolysis and deplasmolysis. Cell keep going uh, processes like plasmolysis after that it becomes again uh, deplasmolyzed cell again it becomes plasmolysis is a continuous process. So, plasmolysis is a called a reversible process. But remember important things that plasmolysis means immediately you have to remember hypertonic, immediately you have to remember exosmosis, immediately remember this is a placid cell for which this is the formula. Okay. What are the important things you have to remember? So, let me discuss with you plasmolysis. It occurs in hypertonic where you take the plant cell, contain cell wall and cell membrane. Cell is kept in hyper means outside the cell, external solution having high solute concentration. Obviously, it is understood that inside the cell low solute, more water, obviously higher water potential. Then opposite outside the cell less water and lower water potential. Then water movement is always from higher water potential to lower water potential. Solution is coming out, water is coming out. When water is coming out from inside the cell to outside the cell, it is called exosmosis going out, it is called exosmosis. As a result, you can see slow shrinking of protoplast, cell wall is a rigid layer, shrinking of protoplast occurs only at the corners. So, here you can see shrink of protoplast at the corners, then it is called partial plasmolysis or incipient plasmolysis. If you wait for some more time, after some time cell protoplast totally loses water, it complete shrinking occurs. Now, this is called uh, complete shrinking of protoplast or plasmolyzed cell or itself is called placid cell. So, for a placid cell, for a placid cell pressure potential is 0 because here pressure is not applied, pressure potential slowly it becomes 0. That is the reason we can take water potential exactly as solute potential. So, for a placid cell pressure potential is 0, water potential becomes solute potential at standard atmospheric pressure. Now, coming to deplasmolysis, immediately we take plasmolysis, placid cell will be kept in hypotonic solution. So, remember hypotonic solution that means outside the cell you find less solute, more water, higher water potential. As we are keeping placid cell here, inside you find more solute because total water is lost, more solute is there and less water, lower water potential. So, movement occurs from external solution that is higher water potential to lower water potential. Then what is happening here? It is called endosmosis entering inside. So, it is called endosmosis. So, if you take endosmosis, it causes swelling of the protoplast right that is called turgid cell and here with what pressure water enters inside is called pressure potential, it is called pressure potential. After that water is fully filled, water is coming in this direction fully filled, again water comes and touches in opposite direction, what protoplast. So, pressure again is to protoplast or wall, it is called Targar pressure and wall pressure. With what pressure they enter is pressure potential. In opposite direction with what pressure water touches the protoplast, it is called targar or wall pressure. So, for a deplasmolyzed cell, for a turgid cell, water potential can be calculated solute potential plus pressure potential. That means, plasmolysis means you have to remember hypertonic and exosmosis, remember placid cell and pressure potential is 0, water potential is equal to solute potential. These are the main aspects you have to remember for plasmolysis. Immediately deplasmolysis means remember hypotonic, endosmosis, turgid cell, water potential is equal to solute plus pressure potential and here this is pressure potential and against the wall is targar or wall pressure. These things you have to remember for deplasmolysis. Now, if you take plasmolysis is a phenomena. Where you can see plasmolysis phenomena, more commonly plasmolysis can be seen, can be employed in more practical examples. So, we can see in more practical examples. Okay. So, let us take examples. 
examples of plasmolysis. So in day to day part of life plasmolysis can be more commonly seen in, in most of the examples. For example, we can take a water stress condition or a saline environment. You know whenever ponds, lakes, rivers, whenever they get dry up totally in the summer season, right? So here suppose if you take the pond, water is totally got uh, evaporated, very less amount of environment, then you find the condition called water logging, marshy area, mud, more uh, mud you can see, little water with mud, right? Water logging condition. So when you see in this uh, water, as water is completely got evaporated, now little water is there, it completely got evaporated due to increase in temperature or in summer season. Then at the base of the pond you can see water logging that is water stress environment or you can take saline environment. Why? At the base of the pond you can see more nutrients. So here you can see more salt concentration. So you can see high salt concentration. Sometimes you can see high, sometimes you can see high salt concentration. Some organisms survive even in high salt concentration. They are called halophiles. The organisms which survive in, the organisms which survive in high salt concentration, high salt concentration are called halophiles, halophiles. How do they tolerate high salt concentration? Because what happens here, it's nothing but plasmolysis, nothing but plas itself, okay? So they survive, organisms survive even at high salt concentration, they are called halophiles. Allophiles found where in the saline environment in water stress condition there occurs the phenomena called plasmolysis right. Now let us talk some more examples this is one example then even you can take salting of pickles, salting of pickles. You know generally mom or at home you can know that mango pickle that will be kept in the summer season. Generally you might have seen what they will do, they take more mangoes, they add more salt. What happens when you add more salt here from the mango piece, water comes out because mango piece you kept in high salt concentration, outside the cell you find more concentration, outside the mango you find more salt concentration, that means it is hypertonic, that means it is hypertonic, then mango becomes a placid cell mango becomes a placid cell, right? So here as water goes into the salt, immediately what happens? Placid cell will undergo deplasmolysis. So to the mango, salt will enter into the mango that is deplasmolysis. So salting of pickles is a good example. You know that after some time you can see mango pieces are salted. Right, so you can see the juice coming out of the mango, then salt enters into the mango, then you can feel that mango got absorbed with the salt. There what happens is called plasmolysis and now not only that, another application of plasmolysis very commonly what you can find here is nothing but preservation of, preservation of fish and meat, preservation of fish and meat by salting or by here by salting yes by keeping in salt environment by salting you know most commonly we say that they will take the fish and they will take the meat and they will keep it in uh, by applying more salt they will keep it for a such a longer duration that preserves them here. So preservation of fish and meat by salting it is also a good example for plasmolysis. Guys, I hope you got it very clearly. Plasmolysis occur in hypertonic, exosmosis, pressure potential 0, placid cell, water potential is equal to solute potential. Examples, water stress or saline environment, they are called halophiles, salting of pickles, preservation of fish and meat by salting, all three are examples for plasmolysis. I hope you got it clearly, right?
diffusion imbibition is a, a type of diffusion imbibition remember we discussed osmosis is also a type of diffusion right similarly imbibition is also a type of diffusion right so what is diffusion here we talk about so here diffusion means immediately we say that what are the things you will remember let us recollect it diffusion means all the properties of diffusion applicable so imbibition it occurs along with the concentration gradient along with the concentration gradient along with the concentration gradient means from where to where from high concentration to low concentration here that is what is called diffusion that means without using without using energy or atp that means can we call this is a passive process yes can we call the imbibition is a passive process obviously why diffusion is a passive process what is passive process uh, along with the concentration gradient movement is happening from high concentration to low concentration without using energy itself is called as what a passive transport now what is the imbibition now let us talk about imbibition it's nothing but a process of let us say that it can be defined by saying a process of absorption of water absorption of water by solids or by colloids okay so what is the process of absorption of water by solids or by colloids right or it can also define or it can also be defined i am writing what is called definition definition of what is called imbibition okay so what we can observe here here you can also define this as the absorption absorption by solids or any other colloidal substances and and their ability and their ability to take large quantity of water large quantity of water is also called as is also called as imbibition it's also called as what imbibition remember imbibition is very very important and we have so many previous questions in the neat so it's a simple concept good concept easy to understand and mostly we find question in the final neat paper so try to understand if you can understand and follow this becomes very very easy concept okay so absorption by solids or by colloidal substances and their ability to take large quantity of water it's called imbibition for example you can take imbibition examples absorption of water absorption of water right by cell wall and absorption of water by cellulose absorption of by water by gelatin and absorption of water by agar agar okay so this is nothing but what it include absorption of water by cell wall absorption of water by cellulose absorption of water by gelatin pectin or absorption of water by agar agar this are nothing but phenomenons where absorption of water is happening by different type of materials right now what is the definition you all understood solids are taking some amount of water it's called absorption and they have an ability to take large quantity of water a uh, solids or maybe colloids if they absorb water is the process called as what imbibition 
ok. Now, let us talk about examples here, examples. You know whenever you take here we can take examples such as a dry seed germination. We can take example a dry seed germination and other example is nothing but absorption of water by dry wood, absorption of water by dry wood. So, what the two important examples we are taking one is called dry seed, uh, another example what we are taking is dry wood. Okay, the two examples what we are taking is dry seed and what we call a uh, dry wood. Now, if you take that whenever you keep the wood here, you know this is nothing but log, a plant is cutted, huge branch of the plant is cutted. So, when you take this is a plant you have, let us take that huge branch got cutted, a huge branch of the plant is cut it. So, what you call this is called as log right. So, this is nothing but wood, this is nothing but what a wood, what we call this is a, a dry wood. So, what happens when you take the dry wood here? So, whenever there was a rainfall some amount of the water accumulate, when some amount of water accumulates here the water creates some pressure, the water creates the pressure. Now, that pressure it, it is called muddu in Telugu we say log right in Telugu we say called muddu right huge trunk log we call. Now, it is used by early prehistoric man early prehistoric man for splitting for splitting what rocks and boulders, rocks and boulders. So, you can take this early prehistoric man in ancient period of time in olden days what the prehistoric man used to do? The early prehistoric man he used to used by that means log is used to buy a dry wood is used to buy used by whom? Early prehistoric man for splitting of rocks and boulders, huge boulders, huge rocks are being broken, right. Why do they get broken here? They get broken because of the pressure what is being applied in penetration of water into this wood, in penetration of water into this wood, right. So, when dry wood becomes huge one, it is called log. You know that using that log, early prehistoric man used for fitting of rocks and boulders, very, very important statements, right. Now, coming to dry seed germination, you know, in different layers of the soil, in different layers of the soil, you find seed. You find seed somewhere at the depth of the soil, you find seed. At depth of the soil when you find the seed, how do you think that such a small tiny seed, how do you think it germinates and produces the young plant, how do you think that a small seed will get an energy to come out by penetrating out from the breaking the soil layers, it is again the dry seed absorbs water, the dry seed absorbs water. Are you getting me? Dry seed absorb water by the process called as imbibition, by the process called as imbibition, ok. So, dry seed absorbs water by imbibition, the water creates some pressure, with this pressure what is P? With that pressure the plant can germinate and produce a young plantlet. So, what are the two examples we are speaking in imbibition? One is seed, dry seed germination, what is the other one? Absorption of water by dry wood, these two examples we will discuss so clearly in imbibition. This is very very important statement, most you will get as a question. Early prehistoric man used for splitting of rocks and 
bolus and what is the pressure applied for bringing the young seed to come out and giving germination again it's a pressure pressure comes from where by the absorption of water by whom dry seed by the process called as imbibition right now let us take these two examples now if you look at these two examples let us discuss in detail about these two examples more examples are there but we mainly concentrate on these two examples 